Richard Spencer is a leading figure in the alt-right. Um, those are the guys who openly want a white ethnostate. They're, I mean, they're kind of just like neo-Nazis. Neo-Nazis who are dressed dapper. Because there was that, um, that conference that we saw from back when Trump was elected. Where, you know, every, a bunch of people in the audience were doing the Hitler salute. And, um, you know, Richard Spencer was saying in his speech, this isn't, they're barely trying to hide it. It's not really all that coded. Hail our people, hail Trump, hail victory. And it was, uh, you know, that translates to hail victory is Sig Heil. I, we've heard that before. So, you know, basically a Nazi. And what's interesting about these characters is that they've gained a lot of support online in like a roundabout way. If you just kind of come out and say what you really believe, that's really not a very appealing ideology to the overwhelming majority of people. If you're like, hey, I'm a racist, I think white people are superior, and I think we should kick all black people and minorities out of the country, um, and, and you just say it, people are like, hmm, too extreme. But if you kind of take other issues as your pet issue and use that as like, this is what we're really about, then you can in a roundabout way kind of hook people into the broader movement. So of course, what I'm really referring to here is free speech. A lot of people on the right have built this industry around uh, saying they care about free speech. And, um, you know, the old, the old argument is, and by the way, it's one I agree with. You're, you're making us victims. You're persecuting us if you don't allow us to speak our minds, wherever it may be, at a college campus or something like that. Like, you're victimizing us, but really we have a principled belief in free speech. So it's about, even if I'm saying things that are really unpalatable or may come across as odious, there's virtue in allowing my message to be out there because that's what a real, um, you know, that's what a, 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 a proper civilization and society does. They hold to these civil liberties. So, again, I agree with that argument. Um, I think I'm one of the champions of that argument. I agree with the ACLU's position on free speech. Well, uh, given the context of how much these guys love free speech, this newly surfaced video is fascinating. Uh, but as far as government regulation... I mean, yes, I think in the short term, we would favor government regulation of speech, but long term, uh, are we even pro-free speech? No, of course not. But we have to use this platform in order. So we're, we're being radically honest here. And, yes, yeah. radically pragmatic. Yes. Hmm. Interesting. So, Richard Spencer has literally sued on First Amendment grounds before. Because, you know, he was, you know, deplatformed or disinvited from giving certain talks at certain colleges or universities. And basically, those colleges or universities were like, hey man, listen, it's not about the substance of what you're saying, it's about the security costs, and we're not going to pay for the security costs. So basically, hey, if you want to pay for the security costs, you can come talk. So he's sued on First Amendment grounds before. And remember, the whole idea is, it's not about... You can't censor people and deplatform people um, or, or any of that for the content of their political speech, even if you disagree with it. So, to this point, they have been massively disingenuous, where they act like, oh, we're principled on this issue. Well, now you have the admission. And I've warned you about this for a while. Many of the people on the right who harp away on that issue, they don't believe it as a matter of principle, they're using it as a convenient mask. So, if somebody like me comes out there and says, hey, Richard Spencer, you're factually wrong about the shit you're saying, and your policies uh, are not intelligent, and they're a terrible idea. It's easy for Richard Spencer and his ilk to fire back like, oh, I guess you don't believe in my free speech. And the response says, no, I actually do believe in your free speech. I think you should be able to give a talk anywhere. And honestly, in, in many instances, I think you should be able to talk, and that will actually turn more people off to you in the long run. But, hey man, I think, um, I think you have an approach that is inhumane, unethical, immoral. I think that you claiming superiority while acting in these ways is 
hilariously hypocritical because you claim like, you know, white people are the beacon of civilization and moral values, but you advocate for the most immoral actions imaginable. So you don't get to act like you're superior and white people are superior and then be in favor of ethnic cleansing and then be in favor of kicking all non-white people out of the country because those actions on their own merits are inferior policies. That's always been the, the core of the... It's been like a self-refuting argument in my mind from white supremacists, from racists of any stripe, because the idea of like, well, obviously we are the enlightened creatures. White people, we are the enlightened creatures. This was the literally the Hitler argument of like, well, the Aryan race is superior and supreme. And everybody else is less than us. And in order to prove how superior we are, we will, you know, murder people willy-nilly. We will commit a genocide. We will do the most barbaric, inhumane tactics and policies imaginable. Well, no, then... So, you are what you do. So when you act in an immoral, unethical way, perhaps you are immoral and unethical, and you're the opposite of the enlightened, you know, being that you claim to be. So that's always been the self-refuting argument to me. You don't get to claim to be superior while acting in the most inferior ways. And these are guys who would, they love to harp away, for example, on the black crime rate. And, oh my god, there's, black people statistically do more crime on average. And that's why they're beasts. But you want to set up an entire nation on the basis of committing crimes against minority communities. How do you not see the contradiction there? How do you not see the hypocrisy there? Look at all the crimes these black people are doing. Anyway, we should expel all people that we don't like from the country. Wouldn't that be great if we commit that crime against people of other races and ethnicities simply by virtue of the fact that their skin color is different and their genetic background is slightly different than mine? No, that, that, that's a bar crime in and of itself. That's a barbaric act in and of itself. When Hitler's shoving people into fucking gas chambers, but acting like we have to do this because we're the enlightened ones, you're the one that's acting unenlightened through those actions. So when I point this out to a guy like Richard Spencer, his response, you know, there is no response to that because it just exposes how the, the, these are immoral people. These are unethical people. You're not enlightened. You're the exact opposite of enlightened. You're unenlightened through and through to your core. Their response is only, I guess you don't like me having free speech. Ugh, I can't believe you don't want me to have free speech. So it's a dodge. It's a way to deflect. It's a way to obfuscate. It's a way to change the conversation from the odiousness and immoral nature of what they believe to you don't even want me to be allowed to say it. So, no, I do want you to be allowed to say it. I do want you to be allowed to say it. And then I'm going to refute it like I just did. And then when I refute it, all they can say is, I, why don't you want me to be able to have the freedom to say this? No, again, I do want you to have the freedom to say it. So, but it's a way for them to change the conversation, to avoid dealing with the rebuttals to their arguments. So, I told you they use it as a tactic. They use the issue of free speech as a tactic. And now they admit it. Hey man, yeah, the reason I, um, the reason we use it is to be pragmatic. Because that's the only way that we can make a broader audience hear what we're trying to say. And then, when some people on the left, what I would call the authoritarian left, give in to his narrative and try to censor him or deplatform him, then he gets an even bigger audience because then he gets to play the victim and say, ah, oh, they just don't want me to be able to spread the truth. That's why they're cracking down on me, because they're afraid if people really hear it, that I'm just too convincing. So it almost becomes like a self-fulfilling prophecy when the authoritarian left cracks down on him. So what I would say is don't crack down on him, let him talk everywhere, and he'll self-destruct and he'll implode, because he actually has no principles. And here you see it. That's why he's acting like he, he's acted to this point like he has a principled stance in favor of free speech. Now he admits he doesn't. So what the fuck else is he lying to you about? Oh, I believe in this, I believe in that. Do you really? How do we know? You pretended you believed in free speech this whole time. Now, obviously, you don't believe in free speech. You just said you don't believe in free speech. Because really what they do, they put... He puts his belief in a white ethnostate above all else. And any... Any... Trickery or deceit. Any tactics he can use to, to get the ends he wants, he will use. In his mind... You know, the ends justify the means. So if he has to act totally unethical in service of his end goal, 
he'll do it and he has no problem with that. But I just wanted you to see this because you know who these people really are. I mean, I know well over 90% of my audience already had accurately, correctly dismissed this guy from early on based on the fact that he's fundamentally a neo-Nazi. But I just want people to know if they didn't already that these are not principled people by any stretch of the imagina imagination. They don't have an ideology or a belief system or anything coherent apart from we dislike the other and we want to base a system on the fact that we dislike the other. 